And we are joined by Hassan Abada uh, from Cape Times, I beg your pardon, and uh, Cape Argus. And of course, he's the editor there to come and uh, talk about uh, the life of uh, Karima as tributes uh, keep on coming through. Well, uh, at first, I mean, like uh, many people uh, didn't know uh, that um, she was in hospital. I mean, one got to find out uh, through uh, other journalists on, on Facebook, uh, but uh, we had hoped that she was going to get well. Uh, at the time of her passing, how did you get to hear about her? Um, just, uh, Colin, I'm, I'm the former editor of the Cape Argus and the Cape Times, and that's where I worked very closely with Karima uh, prior to 2018. But I got to hear about it from a, a friend who works at Reuters, and I didn't want to believe it. And then obviously I saw the confirmations on social media. And it's a really sad day for South African journalism, but also for Karima's family and friends. You know, a lot of people don't know that she has a heart of gold. Um, she's a champion of the underdog and of the working classes. And um, Karima and I actually came from the, come from the same community, you know. So behind that very hard exterior of uh, somebody who's really tough and fierce, um, lies somebody who's really compassionate. Um, she represents the kind of women that I grew up with who were very independent, very fierce, but also, ha as, as Mary uh, described, had a heart of gold, you know. So, so our paths crossed in, in, in two parts of my career. Right at, right at the beginning when I was an intern in Johannesburg, I met Karima and she was very generous with the knowledge that she shared with me. And many young journalists will attest to this. And then um, in 2013, I had the opportunity to work with Karima again when I was editor of the Cape Argus. And Karima gave us the kind of freedom to pursue stories that mattered, stories about people and always shining light on injustice. You know, and, and I think that really is Karima Brown's legacy. Mm. You know, one, one got to know Karima from a newsroom perspective, especially behind the scenes when you sit in a diary meeting and brainstorm story treatment, uh, coverage, as well as the angles uh, that have to be pursued. But other people got to know Karima Brown as a presenter, as an anchor. So when you knew her from behind the scenes and you saw her on TV and listened to her on radio, and she didn't come across as an ordinary presenter. She was always robust, and she would take her guests head on. What was your impression of that surprise yeah. appearance? Look, Karima, um, as I mentioned before, she never suffered any fools. And what I liked about her and what I tried to emulate was that she was always her authentic self. You know, the, what you saw is what you got with Karima, and she never died wondering. I mean, she passed away, and, I, and I'd like to think that Karima didn't die wondering because she wouldn't um, second-guess herself, and she would ask the tough questions that the public needed to know. You know, um, behind the scenes, though, she was always 10 steps ahead of the rest of us, um, whether it was sitting in on conferences and helping us to, to, to develop a story idea. Karima asked some really clever, smart questions of how to push stories forward and she joined the independent media at the time when a, a very kind of staid newspaper group needed a kick up the backside you know she brought fresh energy she encouraged us to innovate and to change what newspapers should be about so um as i say again she she, she was a mentor to a lot of young people she was i regarded her as a mentor first and then a peer and um, we will miss her independent voice. You know, uh, Karima will ask the tough questions when they needed to be asked. And I think even among my colleagues, my past colleagues, they were afraid sometimes of Karima's forthrightness. And that's important. And that's what journalism needs right now. Mm. So when it comes to dealing with a journalist like Karima Brown, who did not have a kid's gloves approach, when it comes to debate and disagreements, and it's nothing personal but business. How do you think she handled herself in terms of the end of the storyline when uh, the debates are done 
and we have to get back to normality after the heated argument in the newsroom. How did the Karima Brown, who is in her element journalistically, and the, that Karima Brown, who is done with her show, was she calm or was she still robust even personally when you talk maybe about... Uh, you know, different topics, having tea or drinking water and the likes. No, she was equally robust. We must remember that Karima came in for a lot of abuse from people. Um, and it's a real pity what's happening, um, the kind of abuse that women journalists in particular face in this country. It's just wrong. And we must speak out against it at every opportunity. But away from the camera, Karima would be as robust. I remember on the fix... She asked me about SAA getting another bailout. And my opinion was that SAA should be privatized. You know, why are we still propping up an airline when it should be run commercially? And Kariba vehemently disagreed with me on the show and after the show. And that was the kind of conviction that she had. And I think that's what there was always a split opinion about Karima. You either loved her or you didn't like her very much. And there was no middle ground because... It was because, precisely because she was so true to her convictions, you know? <laughs> and she was brave enough to change her mind and say so on any given, opinion, on any given issue. Mm. So how would you describe Kariba Brown in terms of a, a light-hearted discussion? If she asked you, how are you doing? And you say, I'm okay. Uh, did you know that she would take you head on for just being okay? What do you mean by okay? Uh, can you expantiate? Uh, the meaning of a K. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, uh, no. how can you prove that you are okay? Okay, so I must share a light-hearted moment with you about Karima. So I had the good fortune of traveling with her. And so did another colleague of mine, Lance Witten. So Lance just told me this, shared the story with me earlier on. And it's something that I remember about Karima. She had an amazing sense of humor. So Lance and Karima were sitting in a big conference, international conference abroad. And they were listening to this intense conversation about the media and journalism. And then Karima had wanted to pass Lance a note and he offered her his notebook. And she wrote in the notebook, gosh, this guy behind us sounds, smells like he had a heavy evening. And obviously both of them then doubled up laughing. But that was Karima, you know, she, she was very open and she, she had a very great sharp sense of humor and um, she she did have a very light side to her you know um, she, she 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 obviously would take you on if she's believed strongly in, in, in something but um, she was a great friend as well and I counted her as a friend not just as a colleague all right thank you so much for making time uh, to speak to us Hassan. Hassan. Thanks for the opportunity to remember Karima as well. Thanks. All right. Uh, we remember her fondly. Hassan Abada is former Cape Times and Cape August editor. And, of course, uh, taking us uh, down memory lane with uh, Karima Brown.